my name is avinash and in this video i'm going to explain how we can launch an um, mysql rdsdb instance in our custom vpcs private subnet then how to get connected to that custom vpc private subnet database from our local laptop mysql workbench with the help of ssh connection by using mysql workbench so first if you want to launch your rds cluster in custom vpc's private subnet so you must for have a vpc with multiple public subnets and private subnets i have a vpc here with two private subnets and two public subnets so if you um, want to create a vpc with this please refer the uh, video custom vpc creation video available in this youtube channel all right so now i'm going to use these two private subnets and i'm going to create a subnet group within that subnet group i'm going to launch mysql rdsdb instance right so let's navigate to rds first in left pane you can find subnet groups navigate to subnet groups click on create db subnet group and provide a name i'm going to call this as a private subnet sg right so this is i'm calling it as a custom vpc's private subnet group so then i'm going to choose my custom vpc then availability zone i'm going to choose ap south 1a as well as 1b so then what subnets so if you observe i have two private subnets d8 and f6 so let's navigate and select d8 and f6 so this d8 uh, subnet is a private subnet from ap south 1a and f6 is a private subnet from ap south 1b then scroll down click on create now a subnet um, db subnet got created now let's navigate to dashboard and let's quickly launch uh, one mysql db instance click on create database I'm going with the standard create. I'm selecting MySQL. I'm going with the default version. I want to be under free tier limitation, so I'm selecting free tier option here. DB instance identifier. I'm going to um, call this as so my SQL DB, and you can give master username as an admin, or you can even customize it. I'm going with the default option and I'm setting up a password. All right, oh, seems it's invalid. All right, I have set up a password and I'm going with the free tier limitation so we can get like you know db.t4g micro also I'm selecting that um, latest one I'm going with 20 gigs not enable auto, uh, storage auto scaling if this feature is enabled when 90% um, of the storage is full automatically it is going to add 10% uh, or 5 GB whichever is higher automatically um, not selecting it and um, so if you want to get connected to this database from an ec2 instance securely with a private connectivity so then you can choose an option and you can select the ec2 instance so i'm going with like you know don't connect to an ec2 instance compute resource right so i'm going to choose my custom vpc and um, db subnet group i'm going to select uh, the private subnet uh, db subnet group we have created public access i'm going to set it as a no and vpc security group i'm going to create a new one i'm going to call this as a mysql sg and uh, availability zone you can choose ap south 1a or 1b and the port number it is going to use 3306 and authentication i'm going to use password authentication i don't require performance 
insights insights and um, i'm good to go with the db parameter group and option group as a default one i uh, i'm not going to enable uh, automated backup if you are enabling this automated backup aws will create a backup copy periodical every day or whenever you are performing any major modifications aws will create a backup copy automatically and the retention period is going to be 7 days so here i'm not going to enable as it is going to take a lot of time to create the backup copies if you want you can choose encryption or and, uh, you can go and choose the uh, custom encryption keys also right i'm not enabling and uh, auto minor version upgrade i'm going with the uh, default option right scroll down click on create um, database so now it's going to take some time to create this database all right so here is the credentials this is what the, the master username for this database and this is a master password for this um, uh, db cluster now if you use this credentials to get connected to this db instance directly from our local laptop it may not work so the reason this db instance is running in our custom vpc is private subnet if you observe the private subnet root table we have only local root so that enable communication only local so this existing one um, uh, just ignore that right so we cannot get connected to this db from our local network but now i'm going to use ssh option to get connected to this uh, database via an ec2 instance so as i mentioned this is going to take some time right meanwhile i'll go and create an ec2 instance to use as a intermediate ssh um, connectivity let me quickly launch instance and remember whatever the instance you are going to use for the bastion host so that should run in our custom vpc's uh, public subnet why because the communication is there between public subnet and private subnet as both are running in same vpc so we are going to use this ec2 instance as a ssh host right so scroll down i'm going to choose amazon linux T2 micro I'm going to select a key pair and edit the network settings I'm going to choose our custom VPC and I'm selecting a public subnet either it is 1A or 1B and make sure so auto assign public IP address is enable now I'm going to uh, create a new security group mysql bastion host uh, sg give a description mysql bastion host so port number 22 i'm not going to open it for everyone i'm going to set it to my ip so from my local network i'm going to take ssh into this machine from this machine via this machine i'm going to get connected to my rds cluster scroll down click on launch instance now you might get a doubt what is the security group configuration for this uh, rds cluster so this rds security group as we initiated to create a new security group it will pick my local network ip address but we are going to connect to this rds via ec2 instance so edit this inbound rule right uh, so you can add a new rule if required and just open mysql and you go and you define security group of mysql um, bastion host so th this is a like you know tightly coupling one whoever connected to your bastion host so they only get connected to your database why i'm keeping this you know i just want to show you uh, direct connectivity from my local laptop to my sql however it's going to fail but just to show you i'm keeping this entry for now this is my local network and this is a 
bastion host security group save rules and remember I have modified my SQL security group that is associated to our SQL cluster. All right, so the DB instance creation is completed. And as you know, for uh, RDS, we are going to get an endpoint, not IP address. So I'm going to use this endpoint to get connected to uh, this DB instance directly from my local laptop. So I'm using MySQL Workbench here. Create a new connection. I'm going to call this as direct connection test. That means standard TCP I'm going to use now. So host name is nothing but our RDS endpoint. And we are using port number 3306 and our username is admin and click on test connection it will try to connect it will try to connect and however it's going to fail the reason my database instance is running in custom vpc is public subnet there is no direct internet access to it so if you want to connect to it securely so then you need to use uh, standard tcp ip over SSH. Right, so seems this application is not responding or it's taking too long time to uh, test the connectivity. Ah. We don't have any other option. We just need to yeah, it's tested and it is saying fail to get connected to this MySQL. All right, so now I'm going to choose standard TCP IP over SSH. Now it's asking what is a SSH host name. So this is nothing but our EC2 instance we're going to use as a bastion host. So we can use this public IP address or public DNS. So you grab the public IP address or public DNS and uh, provide that IP address here and uh, I'm going to use a default user that is a EC2 iPhone user of our uh, EC2 instance so if you are not using any password for this instance so then you can use SSH key file so I have associated a key pair for this EC2 instance and that key pair is a my Linux KP so you should browse that uh, SSH key file here. Click on browse where exactly you store your key pairs. Select that file. Click on open. All right. So then we need to provide MySQL hostname information. So that is nothing but our uh, RDS cluster endpoint name. Then port number is 3306, username is a admin, so we can test the connectivity. All right, it's saying could not connect to SS external, are you sure you want to connect? That's absolutely fine, click on OK. So then it is asking for the password. So you get the password you have set up, then click on OK. So successfully made the connection and this is a host and we are connecting over port number 3306 and now SSL connection is enabled via EC2 instance right so just click on OK now if you want to get connected to it just give a double click and you can see it's opening the editor and we got connected to this EC2 instance uh, sorry this RDS via EC2 instance all right so that is how exactly we can securely get connected to RDS via SSH. Even if you want to use SSL for these connectivities, so you can navigate to SSL option and you can download the RDS, AWS RDS SSL, SSL certificate and you can browse that SSL certificate here. So then 
also you can uh, get connected to it via SSL. All right, um, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you delete all the resources once you have uh, completed your uh, lab. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.